Well, hiya, BookTube. Bill Rutenberg here with the Rutenberg Library. Wanted to uh, come to you today with a video. This is my Christmas haul video. This is some of the stuff I got for Christmas from my family. And uh, uh, I've been watching some of your videos and seeing your book hauls that you got. And I wanted to share mine. And I'm also going to share a couple of other items that I got in the process. And so, and so um, yeah, without further ado, I'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to try to make this quick. I don't want to make this a real long video, but uh, I did want to share stuff. So here we go. So my wife, um, when she was doing stocking stuffers, she uh, always likes to throw in a couple of Hot Wheels. And so she threw in a 2020 Toyota Tacoma into the stocking. And then she also threw in a 65 Mustang Fastback. Thought that was pretty sweet. I, co I collect uh, Mustangs. If you're new to the channel, that's something I collect. And then um, she also had a, a box that she had, I don't have it here. It was kind of a neat little decorative box. And then she stuffed in these uh, Hot Wheels that were, looks like a springtime set. And uh, she gave me three of the five. And so now I'm going to be on the hunt for the other two to complete the series. But it had a Volkswagen uh, Caddy. And you'll notice that springtime look. It, it almost looks like a 1960s type thing. Um, but uh, anyway, here's a 2017 Jeep Wrangler. That was pretty cool, I thought. Nice little addition. And then uh, probably my favorite of these three, the 69 Camaro. Um, I like the muscle cars. And so, yeah, those were my, that was my Hot Wheels that I got for Christmas. And then... Uh, I'll show you the couple movies, and then we'll get to the books. So uh, my daughter Crimson and I, when uh, earlier in the year, when Top Gun, the new Top Gun came out, uh, I had had a daddy-daughter date with her, and we went to the movies and went out to eat and went to the movies and uh, watched the new Top Gun movie. And so I thought this was a pretty cool gift just because it was it was thoughtful. You know, it was, it was something that we did together and had fun. And, and so she got me the original Top Gun movie from the 1980s, and then she got me the new one, Top Gun Maverick. And so I... I cherish these little things like this because, you know, it makes me know that, you know, what we did uh, together on our daddy-daughter date actually meant something to her. And so I thought that was a very thoughtful uh, gift. So now, here are the books that I got. Or let me rephrase that. This is the a probably about half the books I got. The other half are going to be coming in the mail from Amazon. Uh, so I can, I'll show you those at a later time. So uh, the first one that I got was from uh, my, all of these are from my wife, except for one. One of them's from my, uh, my five-year-old. And so this, this is 1984 by George Orwell. And I've been wanting to read this. I actually started to listen to this on audio. And, uh, yeah, I didn't get very far because I lost my place in the audio. I was listening to it through YouTube and it reset the timing thing and I couldn't remember where I was at. But anyway, I, I, I've listened to about 40% of the book, but, um, in, in our local library didn't have it and, uh, or our pub, maybe it was our school library I was looking, they didn't have it. And so that was why I did it on audio, but now I have it. Now I can read it. So if you're not familiar with this, uh, you know, this modern classic, this is a, uh, it says Winston Smith toes the party line, rewriting history to satisfy the demands of the ministry of truth. With each lie he writes, Winston grows to hate the party that seeks power for its own sake and persecutes those who dare to commit thought crimes. But as he starts to think for himself, Winston can't escape the fact that Big Brother is always watching. A startling and haunting novel, 1984 creates an imaginary world that is completely convincing from start to finish. No one can deny the novel's hold on the imagination of whole generations or the power of its uh, admonitions, a power that seems to grow, not lessen, with the passage of time. So looking forward to reading that. I think that's going to be pretty interesting. Um, so one of the new books that are out on the shelves that just came out here late in 2022 
and I'm very excited to have is Stacy Schiff's new biography, The Revolutionary by Samuel Adams, or <laughs> the, Revo the Revolutionary Samuel Adams by Stacy Schiff. Kind of misspoke there. <laughs> I don't think Sam Adams is writing anything new anymore. Um, anyway, uh, neat new book. I've read Stacy Schiff before. I, I read her book, uh, The Witches. Uh, about the Salem Witch Trials. I absolutely love that book. Her her take on the women's history in that time period was absolutely uh, magnificent. Um, she wrote the biography Cleopatra. I have not read that yet, but with our new event that's out, Historathon 2023, um, I'm planning on using that in the first quarter if I can find my copy. It's here somewhere in the library. Um, but I'm planning on reading that. And when I saw Sam Adams come out, of course, I'm teaching this in class uh, with my eighth grade kids. I had to have that. And I'm really excited about that. It's a uh, not not short book, but when you talk about history books, it's a it's on the shorter side or maybe middle side. I don't know. It's not a long book, needless to say. That's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to get at. Um, but it is. Let's see, about 327 pages of text. So I'm really excited to get into that. And when I was looking this up online, I was looking at you know some of her other writings. I also found another one that I'd asked my wife about that I had not read. I didn't even know she had uh, written this book, but um, I'd asked for it. And my wife got it for me, and it's. it's a Great Improvisation, Franklin, France, and the Birth of America by Stacey Schiff. And of course, um, I'm a huge fan of Ben Franklin. I think he was a pretty unique individual. And so this will be a really good uh, book about his life and or his dealings with France is what it sounds like. So let me read the inside flap to you. It says, in December of 1776, a small boat delivered an old man to France. So begins a dazzling narrative account of Benjamin Franklin's French mission and the most exacting and momentous eight years of his life. When Franklin embarked, the colonies were without money, munitions, gunpowder, or common cause. Like all adolescents, they were to discover that there was a difference between declaring independence and achieving it. To close the gap, Franklin was dispatched to Paris amid great secrecy. Across a winter sea thick with enemy cruisers, he was 70 years old, without any diplomatic training, and possessed of the most rudimentary French. He was also among the most famous men in the world. Franklin well understood that he was off on the greatest gamble of his career, but despite minimal direction the con from Congress, he was soon outwitting the British Secret Service and stirring a passion for a republic in an absolute monarchy. He would he would leave more of an imprint of himself than he did elsewhere. In France, he was not the famously elusive Franklin, but a very cons uh, conspicuous one. His image reproduced on teacups, wallpaper, and his every word publicly recorded. The French mission stands not only as Franklin's most vital service to his country, but as the most revealing of the man. In Paris, he was by turns indomitable and vulnerable, a brilliant negotiator and an abysmal administrator. He was at the height of his power, isolated, sabotaged by opponent or opportunist, excuse me, at odds with his colleagues and preyed upon by French and British spies. Fortunately, he was no innocent abroad. He succeeded brilliantly. It was in large part on account of his fame, charisma, and inge ingenuity that France underwrote the uh, American Revolution. It was Franklin who would engineer the Franco-American Alliance of 1778 and help to negotiate the peace of 1783. The French posting would prove the most innovent, inventive act in a life of astonishing inventions. In a great improvisation, Pulitzer Prize winner Stacy Schiff offers an utterly uh, fresh and thrilling account of Franklin's Parisian adventure and of America's debut on the world stage. Here's the unfamiliar chapter of the, of the revolution, a rousing tale of American infighting and treacherous backroom dealing. Schiff weaves her tale of international intrigue 
from new and little known primary sources, working with from a host of diplomatic archives, family papers, and intelligence reports. And from her pages emerges a particularly human founding father, as well as a vivid sense of how fragile the improvisational and international was our country's bid for independence. Um, so I'm real excited to read this. I, I have several Franklin uh, biographies, and I think probably what will be the, the most interesting, it says that she uses new sources. I would be interested to see what new sources came about uh, at this point in history when she's writing this. Um, I don't know that there's going to be too many new things, but she might be able to put a, a new spin on it. And I always like uh, reading, you know, new biographies and new stuff that comes out because it's always neat to see the new look on old events. But anyway, and then uh, this was the one that my my five year old Katie Bell picked up for me, and uh, it's called The Universe: More Than One Hundred Questions and Answers to Things You Want to Know. And uh, of course, she said that she knew she that I would like this because I love history. And so, uh, thank you to my my youngest Katie Bell for getting that for me for Christmas. Um, so anyway, BookTube, this is uh, this has been my Christmas haul up to this point. Anyway, I'm gonna uh, have more books coming in the mail, and I'll share those with you uh, when I get them. But uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed, and I look forward to seeing more of your Christmas gifts that come in. So until next time, BookTube, happy reading.